US, NGAD, and UK Tempest fighter programs work together. The United States and the United Kingdom working together, on their next generation air combat programs. Currently, the United States is going it alone with its next generation air dominance program. Meanwhile, the United Kingdom, is actively seeking to bring international partners for its Tempest program. The latest disclosure the potential for sharing of insight or capability between the separate US and UK programs. Between the United States and the United Kingdom, in regards to sixth generation air combat programs. While the Air Force's secretive next generation air dominance is US only for now, Colonel Metrolis said that the American side would welcome the UK's thoughts on sixth gen development and deployment. But he admitted that it's not clear right now how that will look. Next generation air dominance versus Tempest. In regards to the core man fighter components of these programs, at this stage, we still have only a limited idea of how next generation air dominance and the Tempest will take shape. It's worth noting, that Tempest refers specifically to the manned combat aircraft effort within the British. Meanwhile, although an Air Force next generation air dominance demonstrator or prototype of some kind has been flying since at least late 2020, we don't know what it looks like, but by pretty much all accounts, and maybe some visual evidence, it will be a heavy, tailless, stealthy design. It won't necessarily look or operate like a traditional fighter. Long range, heavy payload, extreme sensor fusion and situational awareness, high connectivity via advanced networking that will enable cooperative tactics with unmanned systems and weapons, and very low observability or stealth are being primary design drivers. It will also cost a lot of money. Based on Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall's statements, they will cost multiple hundreds of millions of dollars each. At this point, the US Air Force is still to decide on a prime contractor for next generation air dominance, or at least the manned component, but Kendall recently confirmed that a final down select is not all that far away. Different companies are meanwhile making their cases for leading the sixth generation fighter effort, with recent statements to this effect from both Boeing and Northrop Grumman. Also the Skunk Works division of Lockheed Martin is also actively engaged in next generation air dominance program. Another possible aspect of the next generation air dominance program manned fighter component is an element of adaptability, with indications that the Air Force is looking at two different configurations of a single design. One of these would be optimized for the European theater, while the other would have added fuel and other modifications tailored for the long-range, long-endurance missions. Ultimately, the US Air Force and the United Kingdom may be taking somewhat different approaches to their next-generation manned tactical air combat platforms. But it wouldn't be entirely surprising if there are at least some parallels, perhaps related to sensor capabilities, networking, and weapons. At this early stage, we should be careful not to extrapolate too much from the Tempest model, however. I don't think that the current iteration of mock-ups is a particularly good guide to what the flying demonstrator will look like, the British program, however, Bronk did observe that the new demonstrator will likely have at least a fair degree of resemblance to any final Tempest Corps air vehicle. Collaboration between the United States and the United Kingdom, or other partners, for that matter. Even if such partnerships existed only on the level of information exchange, it's easy to see how this could still be hugely beneficial to the cutting-edge Tempest and FUS programs, especially as these are both operating according to bold timelines. U.S. Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall has talked of the goal of turning the manned part of next-generation air dominance into a real capability before 2030, while the United Kingdom wants its Tempest fighter in service by 2035. It's going to be the latest technology on both sides, Colonel Metrolis told Air Force magazine. So if they, the British, have a particular insight or capability they can share, or we have something we can share with them, that's good for the alliance. Ultimately, whatever happens in the Tempest program, it seems probable that there will be at least some kind of high-end air combat collaboration between the United States and the United Kingdom, and that the future fighter programs in these countries will all benefit. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe.